So Mattermost, we're doing a um, talk today. If it's not open, it's definitely not secure. My name is Ian Tan, CEO and co-founder of Mattermost. And I'm really excited to share you know, what we learned building Mattermost itself. So Mattermost is an open source developer collaboration platform that connects teams, tools, and clouds. So we increase developer productivity, we deliver mission critical workflows, and we reduce outages. And we've had collectively over 25,000 GitHub stars um, 4,000 contributors and 30,000 code contributions. Thanks to the community, we're in 18 different languages and the Mattermost software is used to, to in the, some of the most secure and advanced developer organizations in the world. And I'm so excited to share what we've learned. If it's not open, it's definitely not secure. A little provocative, but it's uh, it's important thought to, to, to come across today. And what we're gonna talk about in 10 minutes is three ideas to improve security through open source practices. Um, so first idea, nothing useful can be secure. Um, and this concept is, you know, it's, it's a lot of people talk about it. All useful systems have vulnerabilities and we can reduce the number of vulnerabilities, but we can never eliminate all of them. So let's talk through some examples. Um, you want to protect a system, you add a password. Well, now you're susceptible to a brute force attack on that password. Okay, let's add a rule. Three tries and you're locked out if you get the password wrong. Well, now we've created the opportunity to create a denial of service attack. Someone can go in, do three passwords and stop you from using the system. So, you know, no system can actually be fully secure. No useful system. Security is always about making trade-offs. And you've got usefulness, right, which is the business value of your software, the user experience, latency. And you've got risk, which is, you know, your vulnerabilities, your threats, your complexity, all the things that can that can kind of go wrong. And then you've got resources, the people, tools and solutions, the investments that you make in your system security. We're always making these trade offs. And, you know, that is the art of security is like, how do you create that balance? How do you solve these problems? So, you know, that's the framework. That's the first idea. The second idea I want to share with you is to get pwned. Now for folks, pwned means someone has found a vulnerability in your system. And you know, the worst, the worst the vulnerability, the more pwned you are. Uh, for folks that aren't familiar with the word, uh, the three is silent. Pwned means, you know, someone got you. Um, the most important thing is getting ethically pwned. And what ethically pwned it refers to is really having um, inviting ethical security research onto your open source project, onto your SaaS product, onto whatever software you're creating. Um, I personally would recommend never shipping any software without responsible disclosure policy. No system is secure. There's going to be vulnerabilities. And a responsible disclosure policy defines how ethical security researchers can communicate issues to you as the person with the project or the system and lays out how you will address the issues and roll out the fixes to your community, your end users and your customers. So um, as an example, you wanna lay out, okay, um, we invite ethical security research. Here's what we want you to test and here's what we don't want to test. This, Don't touch this over here. This might be mission critical or unnecessary. We don't want you to go off the primary, we want you to go off the secondary, whatever it is. You set it up so that people can conduct, conduct ethical security research. You set it up so that they know how you're going to respond to their research. What is the criteria? What's going to be a high severity? What's going to be low severity? How are you going to push that out to your community? How are you going to, what is your accountability to keep people safe? And then, you know, how are they going to be recognized? Ethical security research, a lot of these folks are professionals. They're, they're donating their time. They're contributing their time and their skill to make your work more secure and to protect your community. You know, how do you recognize them? And it can go everywhere from, um, you know, just, and, and the most important thing at the minimum is you really want to have um, security research hall of fame, a recognition board, a, a ladder, however you want to call it at the minimum, you want to recognize everyone's security contributions, whether they come from um, the, your actual end users, your customers, whether they come from the red team, the security team at a customer site that's vetting uh, your product. Um, or even internal uh, contributors, maybe people in other departments that have you know, reviewed source code. You really want to create, recognize everyone's contributions. It's really speaking to your culture and who you are and how you operate. Um, I want to tell you a story about Andreas Lind, who at 11 Contributions was one of our top contributors um, in security research uh, back in five years ago, back in 2016. And Andreas 
uh, you know, found these found these vulnerabilities, reported them to us, we fixed them. And then he sent this note. He says, hey, I'm going to go to a conference and for like 40 minutes, I'm going to just tell people about like all the vulnerabilities that I found in your system. And some of them were kind of embarrassing. Some of the things that we, some of them were, were really good that like, you know, he was really good at finding them. Some of them were just like, oh, I can't believe we missed that. Um, and it's a little embarrassing, um, but you know, that is just part of the experience. And the one thing that Andreas was a little surprised by was how much we were excited to promote and support his talk. So, you know, it's, it's not that common. Sometimes people are a little defensive. They don't, you know, they don't want security. They don't want their sort of like dirty laundry aired. Um, we think that the healthiest organizations are the opposite. They, they celebrate security research and they recognize great work. So, and that's what we did. We got pwned, we got pwned ethically. We fixed the issues. And at the end of Andres's, um presentation, uh, he was, you know, he's kind of shared it back. It's like the Matamos team, the open source project was, was very accommodating, was supportive. Um, you can see a screenshot here and I'll, I'll give you a blow up of it. Um, we send out distinguished security researchers, the people that find, you know, great issues, you know, vulnerabilities in our product. Uh, we send them an award. Um, it's, you know, it's their name. It's the date of their first contribution. It's a security mug here. It's customized. And the cool thing about this mug is it actually comes like jet black. And when you put a hot liquid in it, it color changes and it reveals the reward underneath. So it's kind of a, a cool piece of swag and recognition that we do for our community. Uh, community really loves it and, and we love doing it. So, um, you know, that's about celebrating your security research. Um, next, and you know, this is all part of a cycle of patching, hardening, and communicating and repeating your security updates. You're always going to find issues, whether internally or externally, and you have this practice, you communicate it out. And you know, I'm gonna click again. This is the top of it, and this is just, you know, this is just what I could fit on one screenshot. So many security issues um, in the last five years um, as we've opened the as we've you know evolved the open source project, and we're proud of it. We're not embarrassed by these security issues. I mean, some of them are embarrassing, yes, but um, we're proud that we have this system and that we patch and we harden and we communicate. It really creates uh, the it really communicates to our community how we think about security. Security, again, is about making trade-offs, usefulness, risk, and resources. We are investing in a responsible disclosure policy and program. It takes a lot of effort to go and review these, um, these, these uh, findings, um, and we do make that investment. What we get is a reduction in risk. Ethical security research, that cycle of hardening, fixing, communicating is so powerful, and it makes us more secure and better and better. Customers love it, end users love it, our community loves it, um, and it's something that's just part of who we are. If you're going to release any software that's useful, it's going to have security vulnerabilities. Please, please, please put a responsible disclosure policy and invest in working with the security community on making your software more secure. All right, idea three. Idea three is about doing the right thing. Now, the obvious thing in security and open source and any software project that uses, you know, most software these days is like 90% open source. Um, the most important thing that's, that's sort of obvious is you want to vet your dependencies, right? Is this secure? How does this work? You know, just, just kind of looking over it and being really thoughtful about where the vulnerabilities might be in your dependencies and vetting. That's, that's obvious and, and everyone should be doing that. What's not obvious is the importance of supporting your supply chain. And when you find, um, you know, we go through a lot of libraries and, you know, once in a while we'll find something that's like, wow, like that's kind of scary. And um, you have a choice. You have a choice of like, well, that's scary. I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'm gonna work over here and continue balancing out that triangle. Or you make the decision saying, that's really scary. We have a responsibility to our supply chain to make sure that gets addressed. And that's what happened to us um, last year. And what happened was we found in the Golang language in the XML library, a round trip vulnerability, the semantics of the XML payload weren't being appropriately, in our opinion, appropriately verified. And there was an assumption that it was. And the problem with making that assumption was downstream libraries that use the XML parser for uh, authentication thought they had a guarantee and they really didn't. And, you know, we released this in, uh, we, you know, we, we made this announcement on our blogs for December 14th. And, you know, we had a core, this, this issue affected, you know, a lot of other uh, systems. So um, downstream, the XML parser vulnerability meant that um, SAML SSO authentication didn't have a, a guarantee there. And what it could do is 
um, it could create an opportunity for SAML authentication bypass. And this was a vulnerability that was in the downstream libraries and therefore in the, in the applications downstream from those authentication libraries. Um, and it was, it was a pretty material issue. Private companies, public companies, public sector organizations were exposed. And when we came across this, we're like, holy crap, right? Like, like that is a, a really big deal. So um, what we ended up doing was working with the Golang team. Um, we reported the Go security team. Um, they verified it. We, there was not a way to actually uh, solve it in language because of, of how the XML parser was intended to work. So, you know, like Go can solve it. And we just knew that if we disclose this, there's so many downstream um, players in the supply chain that it would be a very material issue that would be very difficult for them to quickly fix because they'd have to really understand it was kind of subtle. We spent our own time and resources to create a workaround package um, for this issue. And in a coordinated disclosure, we work with Go, we work with Go and Google, and we said, okay, at this date, we will tell our, those downstream libraries. We will show them the issue. We will show them the workaround, and we will have them prepare confidentially a patch. And at this date, we will then communicate to the people we know are downstream, the private, public, you know, public sector organizations, and communicate to them uh, that this is coming and that we're just going to be a public disclosure. And we were able to prepare to prepare folks to pick up the patch, to understand their exposure and their vulnerability, and get those people who we we could identify um, to pick up the patch and be secure before the public announcement became, you know, really really public. So before it could be, you know, exploited essentially. So um, you know, we did all that between August, you know, end of August we discovered it. September, October, November, December, we worked and worked and worked to get this out. And um, you know, when it came out, the press was critical Golang XML parser bugs can cause SAML authentication bypass. It was multiple issues. It wasn't just one. But that was it was a lot of work. It was a lot of investment. And you know, that was really about doing the right thing. So security is about making trade-offs. And in this case, you know, we invested a lot of resources in securing a part of our supply chain that we didn't even depend on. So the usefulness of our product and our risk didn't change, but we spent resources to really give back to the community. And that's the last thought I, I wanted to share, you know, doing the right thing, it's so important. And, and the question is, well, why would you make that investment? How do you justify that investment to your leadership, your management, if you're, if you're funded, your investors? Like, how do you justify that? And here's the secret of open source and security done right, in my opinion. The more you give away, the more you keep. Ultimately, security is about trust. And when you create trust it from your community, from your supply chain, from your end users and your customers, that's the whole ballgame of security. So thank you so much. My name is Ian Tian, Mattermost CEO and co-founder. Very happy to continue the discussion on Twitter, on LinkedIn. You can also join our Mattermost server. So it's like Discord, it's Slack, but it's, it's Mattermost, completely open source, and very welcome to join our 10,000 community members talking about Mattermost and, and these kinds of issues. Thank you so much, Bitwarden, for having me at your summit. And uh, to the audience, you know, have, have a fantastic conference.